Hello again everyone and welcome back again for another video. What we're going to talk about today is some of you that have wanted to upgrade to Windows 11 on your computer and you ran the PC health check like you see on the screen here and uh, you went ahead and you pushed the uh, check now button and you're getting a message like this that says well TPM 2.0 must be supported and it doesn't have TPM on your computer. Uh, and then it says your processor isn't supported. Uh, th right this here says that I have a Core i7-3770. That's an old processor. Dang it. It's not working, huh? It runs good for me. Got 16 gigs of RAM in this computer. This is a Dell Inspiron 660, by the way. It's my favorite board to uh, use it as an example board for many things. But anyways, uh, Core i7... 16 gigs of RAMs, even got a 512 gigabyte SSD on it, and it's telling me that I can't run Windows 11 on it because it's not going to work. Well, what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to get around that, and I'm going to kind of go through that process with you so you can see it happening on the screen. Um, the the Inspiron 660 is one of, of several uh, older machines and older hardware, of course, that uh, you might see a message like that on. Um, what we need to do is we just need to get around the requirements for upgrading uh, this computer. Now, um, on this one here, you can see the motherboard model I'm using is a 084J0R, typical uh, Inspiron 660. So this would be the... Uh, micro, or yeah, excuse, yeah, micro ATX sized, uh, not the uh, uh, small form factor one. Um, anyways, let's close this up and uh, proceed along here. Now, um, I have a couple uh, websites bookmarked here, and these are the only two websites that you need to know to uh, get us going here to uh, get Windows 11 on this old computer. Rufus is the first one that we need, and that's really easy to find. It's rufus.ie slash en for English. And you just go down, scroll down to the download section, click right there, and go ahead and download Rufus into your downloads folder there. And then the next thing we're going to need is uh, to download the Windows 11 uh, installer. And you can get that from Microsoft.com. Just Google that. The... Uh, Windows 11 uh, installation media creation tool. <coughs> Excuse me. Here it is right here. We're going to go ahead and download that too into our downloads folder. Okay? That's the only two things we need. That's the only two things you need to look up. So let's go ahead and close that. Go into our downloads folder. And we're just going to run our media creation tool. And... Instead of writing this to a USB stick, we're actually going to write it to an ISO file instead. So we're going to go ahead and go through that. We're going to click accept here. <coughs> Excuse me. Next. Okay, right here it says choose which media to use. ISO file. Okay, then you're going to go ahead and click Next, and that's going to go ahead and open up a box and let you choose where to uh, save the ISO file. Now, you can see I've already created one, and I've saved it down into my Downloads folder. You can save it wherever you like. You can put it on the desktop, same folder as you got, Rufus, whatever you want. But uh, go ahead and click Save, and it's going to run through its process there, and it's going to take a little while. And uh, the when it's done, what you'll have is a uh, ISO file right here um, called Windows that you can see that uh, is in the folder that I'm showing you. Now what we do is we're going to go ahead and open up Rufus that we downloaded here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and insert a uh, USB stick into the uh, USB drive. It's got to be at least 16 gigs or bigger. Preferably, uh, I put I threw a 256 in there because uh, that's what I seen uh, on the shelf here. So now oh, I'll just grab one of these. But anyways, that's why I got a 256 in case you're wondering. It doesn't have to be a you know a huge one like this. Just 16 gigs fine. Anyways, so next we're gonna go ahead and choose our uh, ISO image right here by clicking select 
and we're going to go ahead and choose the Windows ISO that we created with the Windows 11 media creation tool. <laughs> now this next part down here we can actually skip in the older versions of Rufus um, you actually had to change the perimeters here but here it'll, it'll actually come on the next page and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, here under GPT and MBR, this would be for like really, really old computers that don't have the UEFI BIOS. Uh, if you're looking to install Windows 11 on something like that, but uh, let's let's skip that for now. Uh, that goes a little bit deeper into installing. For now, we're sticking to uh, computers that do have the UEFI, but don't have like the TPM uh, requirements that they can meet. Anyway, so after we've set this up here, the uh, to boot from the ISO, the ISO boot selection right there, and chose the Windows ISO that we made, uh, we're going to go ahead and click Start. Now what's going to happen is this box is going to pop up here, and it says Remove Requirements for 4 gigabytes of RAM, Secure Boot. We're going to make sure that's checked. And then the next one down, it says Remove Requirement for an Online Microsoft Account. And that, that's actually, I like that. That's one of the newer things that they've done with Rufus is that uh, they've got rid of that requirement because a lot of times when you install Windows 11, it ain't going to let you go on any further until you sign up for Microsoft account. And it's like, yeah, what, so you can spy on me? I mean, that's a lot of people's feelings on it, and it, it's really kind of aggravating. And, uh, yeah, it's nice that Rufus will actually take care of that as well. So anyways, so we're going to go ahead and go ahead and click OK. And of course, we're going to get a warning here that it, you know, is going to destroy anything else that's on the uh, device. It's going to wipe it clean and blah, blah, blah. So go ahead and click OK and let that uh, go ahead and finish up. It's right there. It's formatting. It's going to take a little bit here. Let's let's close this up. Um because it's actually creating two partitions, a couple different partitions here, I think. But uh, it'll take a while, depending on the speed of your USB dr uh, drive or whatever. But uh, after that's done, let me cut the scene here until it's done. And then uh, we'll get back to that here in just a second. All right, we're back. And Rufus is done creating the media that we needed. And you can see it says that it's ready. We can go ahead and click close there. And uh, now we can see under the ESD ISO in our uh, Explorer that there is a new thing here called Setup that we can run. So that's all we have to do is just go to the uh, disk that we created under Rufus. Excuse me, hiccups. And then run Setup. We can go ahead and close that up. <clears throat> and it's going to ask you if you want to install Windows 11. And you can just keep this unchecked right there. Click Next. Let it check for updates. I mean, it's before you actually used to have to unplug your internet because what it would do, it was it would check for updates and then it would just totally screw up your installation. <laughs> uh, it would tell you that it's not compatible still. But uh, with the new version of Rufus here, it's kind of fixed that. So there you go. We can see where that we are. Uh, going along now um it's going to ask me if i want to keep stuff like that remember we are doing an upgrade we're not doing a fresh install but if you want you could pull it out and do a fresh install now when it comes to keys um whether you're going from windows 7 to windows 11 or from windows 10 to windows 11 you can use the windows 7 key or the windows 10 key to activate windows 11 too um, a lot of times, like on these Dell Inspirons, the little course came pre-installed with like Windows 7. Uh, and then they'd have like a sticker on the top of them or whatever in the side or whatever that give you the, uh, the serial number, the key for the uh, Windows 7 operating system. Well, you just take that sticker and when you are installing like a fresh copy of Windows 11, you just... Uh, type in the, the uh, Windows 7 key stickers and it will activate just fine. Now, once you have that installed with 10 or 11, it's in the BIOS of the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, computer. And uh, it's 
from then on, if you need to reinstall the operating system, you don't even need to enter a key. Just click, I don't have a key. And as long as you remember which version, whether it's uh, Windows 11 Home, uh, Windows 11 Pro, whichever it is that you uh, had went with, that's what it's going to uh, activate under. So usually you just install, you know, without the key. And when you reboot, you'll see that it's activated once you are uh, on the Internet. Pretty neat now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that th this works like, you know, in, on older computers like this. And right now I'm kind of babbling to kind of take up time here. But uh, to uh, take up a little less time, I'm going to go ahead and pause again uh, until we get to something significant in the video. Okay, it's finally gotten past that part, and uh, now it says it's ready to install. Look at that. We're progressing here. Um, so it's going to install Windows 11 Home. It's going to keep all my files and stuff here. Like you can see that we've got, uh, well, I guess we can't call that up. But, uh, yeah, it's going to keep anything that I have already have installed in there. It's going to keep all my documents. So uh, I can change these right here if I want. You know why it's not working on me? Because I didn't. Uh, change my uh, mouse over. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, anyways, we're looking right here. Um, it's going to keep all my documents and stuff that I uh, downloaded here, like in the downloads folder. Uh, you can see I have all those. I'm not going to lose anything, and I'm not going to lose any files, but uh, that's what I'm saying. We can go ahead and click install now. And as you can see, the screen went blue, and it's going to install here. Now, this is going to be pretty boring, so uh, let's switch back over here and uh, pause the video. Okay, so now we've reached the point where it says your PC will restart in a few moments. Okay, as you can see, it's starting to go into restart. Now, as it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the USB stick that I was using and set that off to the side. We're not going to use that, need that anymore. And uh, we'll go ahead and let the Dell, uh, as you see, uh, restart itself. And you can see that it's uh, got the little ring spinning there. It's doing its thing. Um, this might take a minute here. Let me go ahead and pause this. So, wow, okay, I uh, went upstairs and heated up some chili uh, to come mow down on while this was doing its update. Took about, oh, I don't know, less than 10 minutes, but uh, I come back down to check on it now, and uh, wow, here we got Windows 11 on the screen. So that's all there was to it. <laughs> So as you can see, our uh, that picture that I left was still there. We go into our uh, one second here. Oops, that's right. It moved to the center. If we go into our uh, explorer, look at our downloads. We can see our uh, Windows ISO still there, our media creation tool, Rufus, all our stuff still there, and uh, that was it. See how simple I did that. Uh, you know, there wasn't too much to explain there. Now I can go ahead and start customizing this for Windows 11. So this video is pretty much done. But tell you what, hang around here and uh, check out what I did to this Dell Inspiron uh, besides doing this Windows 11 upgrade. This one's actually going up uh, for sale on eBay. Um, let's, let's show you the specs on it real fast here, I suppose. Uh, task Manager... Wow, they moved the everything around here. Look at that. Details, processes, performance, change graph to logical processors. Yeah, look at that. Core i7-3770, 16 gigs of RAM, GT1030, rocking Windows 11. Yeah. All right. But anyways, let me uh, let me cut this here and let's go have a look at this computer. All right. So here is the completed build. Uh, this one's actually going to go up on eBay. It's uh, I got some old Dell boards that I'm uh, dressing up and selling off. Uh, this is one of those. I just figured uh, I'd use that as a tutorial for Windows 11. I'll let you have a look at the front of this right there. Uh, I got some like clear, not really clear, but they're they're uh, white uh, 
fans here in the front that uh, kind of show the RGB on the sides of it, too. So this is kind of a neat looking uh, fan setup here in the front that I got going on. Let me back off there a little bit so you can see that. Tell you what, let me go ahead and turn off the lights. <clears throat> Let you soak in that prettiness. Uh, we'll take the camera up here. And we'll tilt this this way so you could have a look at the inside. RGB. Um, the 24 pin right here for the power got kind of a helix effect going on. Let me actually find the button in the dark here. Where is it at? Um, as you can see, I can switch modes with the button up on top. I don't know how well that helix effect is showing, though. But, uh, yeah, let me, let me turn on the light. Might be able to see it better in the light. Now I got to get back to a helix effect. There we go. There's rainbow. So, yeah, this is actually a pretty cheap setup that I used. Um, you know, I can't remember the brands. <laughs> but uh, the components themselves are actually pretty good quality uh, for the board anyways. Like the team group uh, SSD I got going on there. The memories, team group memory. Um, pretty standard uh, max out on a uh, Dell Inspiron with the Core i7-3770. And the 16 gigs of RAM going on there. Got a video card in here. It's a GT1030. Now, usually on these GT1030s, um, I use the ones that are passively cooled that don't have fans on them. On this one, I actually decided to go with the one with the fan just to give this a little, little nicer look to it than uh, the ones with the fins hanging down. But, uh, yeah, this one's going to go up on eBay. Nice computer for somebody. Oh, look down here, too. Uh, where the window is for the power supply, I just put a little uh, rose chrome kind of uh, vinyl wrap over the power supply to kind of give that a little bit of color. So if we back that up here, let you have a look at that that way. That looks pretty neat, doesn't it? So yeah, so I got to put the glass back on now. I got that over here. Uh, and uh, get this boxed up. We'll get this posted up on eBay. And that's going to be the end of this uh, Windows 11 uh, upgrade tutorial. So hopefully you guys learned something here. And, uh, well, I guess I will see you in the next video. Not sure what that's going to be. Probably my sons. I've been saying that for a while now. And I suppose I should get to it. But winter's coming up here. And so that kind of changes my time for things. But, uh We'll see you in the next one. Uh, see you later, guys. Have a good one.